Hi everybody and welcome back to MD Fly Fishing. Well, the title of the video is not exactly true when everything else failed. Well, it did actually. I used a chamois worm for a while. It caught three fish within 20 minutes, but before that there's 20 minutes of nothing. And after that there's another 20 minutes. So I went onto a washing line. I caught one fish on the middle dropper, which was a black buzzer with white crisp bag cheeks. And then I thought back to what other people were using. And I did say, the next time I go back to Pennine, I'm going to use them. So I did. But I didn't have any in my bag. I had hooks. I had beaded hooks. But I had the squirmy worm material in a bag. So I trimmed off some white. Hooked it onto the hook like you would do a worm. And the fly in the picture is the same fly I used throughout the whole session. It didn't get chewed up. I had to slightly readjust it once or twice. But under a bung, it worked brilliantly and got me some cracking fish. So how did I fish it? Well, first of all, camera angles. I've got a back camera on and I had a head cam on. Now, I didn't have the head cam on all the time because it kept playing up with an SD card error. But never mind. There is some good footage from the back and from the front and it's mixed up throughout the video. Again, it's another 15 minute video. I did cut some of the fish out, but I've kept some of the best ones in. So, floating line, 10 foot leader, indicator. First started fishing them about 4 foot down, got 1 or 2, slightly died off. Brought it up a bit to 3 foot, got 1 or 2. But the best depth for me was about 2 foot under the indicator. You could see the fish moving around. And I could see actually the squirmy worm, the white squirmy worm sometimes. And all I did was just watch the indicator. Sometimes it would just bob up and down. They probably just got the end of the squirmy worm. Other times it would slowly go under like a sinking float. Sometimes it would just gradually go. And other times it would go under very quickly. And I found that was mainly the blue trout that took it very quickly. All hard fighting fish. As I say, I've only got eight pound fluorocarbon on here. Um, I thought once or twice when my rod went, I thought, this is going to snap me, please don't snap. But I got some belting fish. I was able to keep three of the fish because that's what day ticket I paid for on the day. Uh, I paid 43 quid for three fish, mainly to give to friends of mine. Uh, this weekend I was supposed to go to Wembley with Huddersfield Town, but due to my wife, um, well, she broke a hip. So she's now out for five or six months. And she works in a hospital as well. So, I'm looking after her. I can't afford to go away for the whole day. So, come on the Terriers. Do us proud. But anyway, another football. Anyway, BC, we might be playing you next season. You know what I mean. And that's what we did all day. Indicator, different depths, squirmy worm, white in colour. And that was it. A little bit repetitive, but it got me great fish. Hard fighting fish. Some of them came right out of the water. Some of them went deep, to the left, to the right. But it is straightforward, no nonsense, not going to blank fly. There was a, a lad off to my right when I was fishing the chamois and for about a 20 minute period, three good fish. Turned around to me and went, here, do you want a chamois? Gave him a chamois. That was a kiss of death on that because I never caught again after that and neither did he. But he did catch later off to my left, so I'm glad about that because he looked a bit disheartened. And it can be paying a lot of money to get fish but find them few and far between. This is where this fly comes into its own when all else fails. Get this on and it will get you some good fish. Them three fish I had in total were about 12 pound, five, four and three pounder. I was hoping to get some bigger ones. I did see them hanging around. In fact, George over at the corner, he got a nice eight pound browner. Absolutely brilliant. The fins on it, the colors. That's on the Pennine website if you want to have a look. Or should I say the Pennine Facebook group? It's open. Just type in Pennine Trout Fishery on Facebook and you'll see all the fish that are caught there. I've never started it myself, to tell you the truth, but never mind. Got cloudy, got sunny, got warm, got breezy, but the squirmy worm caught fish throughout. I didn't start on it actually until late in the <laughs> uh, I think it was about mid morning before I got onto it. But then throughout the afternoon, fish, fish, fish. A lot of the guys are having success on Pennine Biscuits, especially over by the hut. I'd walk past one guy, he'd only been there about 20 minutes, had four fish out already. I didn't have any with me and I didn't want to fish any anyway. 
because originally oh, yeah, I rock. was coming here to try out a, a different mm, type of squirmy no. worm, but that didn't materialise. But then I did say, as I said in my last video, I'm going to try a white squirmy worm. And I'm glad I did. Give me lots of fun. Some nice fish, as I keep saying. I was chuffed with them. One of the rainbows, really chunky. In fact, I think that might have been a little bit more than five pound. I didn't weigh them individually. I just weighed them as a, a group effort at the end. But the rod I'm using, again, my little famous £10 wish.com rod. I think I've got a Ron Thompson line on here as well, a floating line. Same reel. You might pick me up, guys, because sometimes I just... Uh, throw the rod to the rear onto the grass but sometimes I miss but I've got a stack of them reels with stacks of line I know it's uh, slightly mismanagement of equipment but it cost 11 quid I've got more expensive stuff that I've never used yet but fish again were topping everywhere and there were some monsters out there you could see they weren't breaking the water they were smashing it I don't know what they were chasing one actually came from roughly where the cages are straight towards me and it was like a, a torpedo coming straight towards me and I thought I wonder how big this thing is and then it turned about a rod length out and went off to my left never saw it just saw the wake that it made but anyway simple method simple fly under a bum just remember if you're not catching at two foot move it to three foot nothing at three foot move it to four foot on one occasion I did take the indicator off and let it go down as deep as it could there was one take, but by the time I struck into it and took up the 10 foot of leader and the line off the, off the water, I'd missed it. I'd already chewed it, knew it wasn't real, spat it out. Indicator, best way forward. Just trial and error with your deck. But as I say, mixed type of footage from the rear, from my head. Try to mix it up as best I can. And uh, I know my area behind me looks a bit cluttered. I had a sandwich box in that. I actually hooked into one fish. Then out of the corner of the eye, right. I could see Go the on. packaging of the sandwich blowing across the grass towards the water. And I do not want to be responsible for littering the water. So whilst playing the fish, I uh, went over to the right at least a good 10 foot to grab the packaging just before it went into the water. Sorry, Andy, everything should be packed away and sensibly organised. I've got a nice little area here. Uh, it's not mine. I, I did invite the guy to the right. I said, come further over here, mate. Come further over here. The fish are all in front of me. But he went, no, I'm okay where I am. People do give each other space. Even when me and Ross fish together, we're not exactly in each other's pockets. We've given himself ample distance. That's why he captures more than me. Well, not today, Ross. In fact, Ross, I'm going to invite you to this place. I don't know how easy it is for you to get here, but uh, I'm formally inviting you. I was thinking back the other day when I lived in Wiltshire. I used to fish Avon Springs with a very good friend of mine called Stephen. And we used to only fish it with Montanas. We didn't have many flies. In fact, we, we, I think we had a bit of tobacco tin of some description. But taking into account the type of flies and how we fish flies nowadays, I think me and Steve would absolutely destroy that place if we ever went back again. I know you're watching, Steve. Do you remember those days? <laughs> we used to skive off work in an afternoon. It was a sports afternoon. Usually everyone went to a pub, but uh, me and you, down to Avon Springs, off we went. Great fun. I think I've got an old 8mm tape of us when we were fishing there as well. But anyway, oh, I loved it. We even fished in South Georgia together on the end of the jetty in freezing cold weather in the middle of the South Atlantic. But guys, that's me for today. I'll let you watch the rest of the video. Thanks very much for all the comments. All the, coming up to 2,000 subscribers now. And again... This is my days out. Some people say, we do learn from you. Well, I'm just passing on information. If it catches for me, it will catch for you. And I reiterate, try everything. If you're not catching, try everything. If you're not catching, go mad. This is my mad. I think there's one other time I fished a squirmy worm, and that was a red one. And I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Straightforward, indicator, squirmy worm, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot. Try not to go too deep because you're going to miss them strikes. But my most productive fish were taken at about two foot. But anyway, that's me. I'm going to watch the playoffs. Thank you again, everybody, for subscribing. And I will catch you later. Oh, by the way, I'm going to a private fishery on uh, Monday or Tuesday next week. That should be interesting. Catch you all later.